Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's Bible study. If you've never seen me before or never attended a Bible study in your life, you're welcome to stay. For those of you who know me, who are in our group, Blood, Bot, and Born Again, I'm one of the moderators. We have about a dozen moderators and some administrators that are helping that group. We're over 10,000 now. 10, 000, I think it's almost 10,500, 10.5K. I feel really good about that. And the numbers are climbing. So, you know, I'm really blessed to be a part of that group. And also there's people I'm connected with on social media that are not a part of the group that are Christians. And I'm happy that you're able to join me today. So I want to tell you, um, we have a little bit of an interesting Bible study this evening. And <clears throat> no, if you're thinking, is David going to hold the microphone for the whole time? The answer is no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to kind of sing along a little bit with this song that I'm going to play in a few minutes. But I'm not going to sing the entire song because I'm a little out of practice on it. And I felt like with fall time, this would be a good time to sing this song. And so I'm a little bit early singing this song, but I think you'll enjoy it anyway. I really like it. And in fact, I think it makes the demons run in 10 different directions when this song is played. But I'll let you all decide that when you hear it. I'm going to read a title that I want to make sure is in this Facebook Bible study and obviously YouTube. Anybody on YouTube subscribers over there? Um, I'm not doing this one live over for you guys tonight. I'm doing this one live on Facebook. Okay, I'm going to read this title. Okay, so we're going to be diving into a little bit of Joel and uh, Zechariah, the two Old Testament books. Does God have something to say about what we're seeing in the Middle East right now? Is he paying attention? Would he share his thoughts about maybe things that are happening right now in our time? Or is he, is he, is it like a football where you, you punt, you know, you punt, you kick it down, down the field for a later time? Or are we experiencing birth pangs and are those birth pangs increasing? What do you all think about that? You think, do you think we have another 50 years before Jesus returns, or do you think it's going to happen in this generation? Honestly, if you want my personal opinion as a student, I think there's no question that it's going to happen in our generation. I've been saying that for a long, long time. And I see that some people are coming on, Nettie, Linda, and uh, Anna. And uh, I have my other phone in the way, so I'm sorry about that. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. We'll see. I don't know if it's going to be very long tonight. I always try to um, keep these as short as possible for time, time's sake. I respect people's time, but I want to be straight to the point, okay? Let me read this title for you. The question is, is God paying attention to what's happening in Israel right now? Did the uh, surprise attack the other day in Israel catch him by surprise? I'm going to read a scripture to you that was written down thousands of years ago, but does it sound a little familiar? Is this scripture locked up? Is this scripture been unlocked? Is it uh, referring to something else? You know, a lot of scriptures have double references, ladies and gentlemen, where it's happened in the past, will happen again, nothing new under the sun, Solomon says. Yeah, that's how God works. His, his word is alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Something the world doesn't understand. Something that Rashid Talib, AOC, uh, Ilian Omar, and those all of those Jew haters out there that have demons, they don't understand that at all. They will find out someday if they don't repent of their sins and get a born again experience, they're gonna find out the hard way. All right, and, and for anybody that's watching this that's not a part of that squad, you know, I want you to get saved. I want you to learn who Jesus Christ is, okay? And that's why we do these Bible studies. By the way, I don't have raps or fever like a lot of people would think. Oh, David talks about eschatology, end times, Bible prophecies all the time. No, no, I don't. Um, but I'm watching. I'm doing exactly what Jesus told me to do. He told me to watch. He told me to watch the signs, and he told me to be patient, 
okay, for the latter rain coming in, the latter rain are our souls for the kingdom of heaven. So what are we supposed to be doing while we wait? We're supposed to be patient, we're supposed to be watching, and we're supposed to be about God's work, okay? Everybody has a gift. If you're in the family of God, you're a Christian, you have a gift, you have a talent that you can share and contribute in God's um, vineyard. We, we're all supposed to be in his vineyard doing something, okay? Here's the title. Question again, is God paying attention? Is he watching what's happening? Listen to this. Joel chapter two, verse nine. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. So a thief has a characteristic. A thief um, is trying to conceal that he's a thief. He doesn't want everybody to know he's a thief. He wants to come in uh, and steal from you and take things from you and break the law and do evil things while you're not paying attention. That's what a thief does. So God compares this passage of scripture to some people, some bad people who are doing evil things like a thief. Catching, catching unknowing people by surprise. I want to submit to people tonight that the book of Joel and Zechariah and obviously Isaiah and Psalms and Proverbs and Jeremiah, Zephaniah, a lot of them, uh, Amos, etc., have a lot to say about uh, the generation that we're living in right now. There's no question about it in my mind at all because I see all these references that just seem to match, okay? The verse of scripture that I just read, does it mean that that was referring to the ambush the other day? Maybe not, maybe so. God's word is alive and powerful, just never forget that. It's, it's living, it's breathing. And so what I'm trying to tell everybody is a lot of those passages in scripture are locked up and unlocked at certain times in human history, okay? When something significant happens, like for example in Israel, we need to open up our Bibles and see if God has something to say about it. That's what I do. All right, that's what I do, I do that. Uh, but before we dive in a little deeper here, I'm gonna play a song for you. I'm not gonna sing the entire song, but I'm gonna sing in with a little bit of it, okay? And then I'll let some of it go because I'm a little out of practice, but I like it. And I'm home and then I will turn the microphone off because I know it annoys people with the echo. <laughs> and I've had people tell me before, do you have to have that echo with that microphone while you're doing this? And I'm like, well, no, I don't have to. But when a song is being played, it's a little bit nicer, you know? Um, but I will turn it off and after we're finished and then you'll just hear my voice without any echo, okay? <laughs> all right, so let's play this without any further ado. Tell me if you all remember this, if it rings a bell. There is for child. Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. And man will live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day. Long time ago in Bethlehem, the Holy Bible said, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now hear the angels sing, a king was born today. And I will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Mary's child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Sing, 
A king was born today, and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Oh yeah, demons, you can run in ten different directions anytime now, it's fine. I've been dealing with you for a while now, we're pretty sick of it. So let's get rid of them, alright? The king is coming. Sooner than most people think. Why do you think I do this? Why do you think I'm watching? Why do you think I'm paying attention? Because I have nothing better to do? No, I have a lot to do, but in my DNA. song guys you know I don't sing all the time but sometimes I do and it may not be exactly in line <laughs> who I'm singing it with, uh, with on these songs but you know what I have plans for that in the future my singing's gonna get a little bit better quality um, and eventually yeah I'm gonna sing better because once I practice I do quite well I just right now I don't know I feel like, I feel like, do I got to come on here all the time and just give y'all bad news and, and without having any kind of songs that give God glory, you know? Um, I think it's a bad way to start a lot of times, but a lot of people do. Um, if I had had it my way, I would do it every single time, but sometimes I'm just not in a good place to do it. But um, yeah, I like chasing those demons out before we do a Bible study. Because maybe I won't have so many audio issues or something stupid happening, you know, interruptions, whatever. I get that a lot. <laughs> Need to pray before it more, you know. Annie, absolutely. It's a cool song, right? I love it. God bless you too, Anna. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit. Let me get rid of the mic one second. Okay, one second here. Can you all still hear me okay? Thank you, Linda. I got this jacket for, uh, actually, there's pads that slip in here in case I crash on my, uh, on my Enduro. <laughs> so I don't plan to do that. But, you know, I don't heal up as fast as I used to when I was 20. So if I do wipe out, you know, which God forbid, then, then I'm not going to injure myself quite as badly. It's not like I'm running, racing or anything too much, but... It's a warm jacket. It's getting colder around here in Idaho now. And uh, the good news is, the good news is, for me, I guess, maybe not so much for everybody out there, but the good news is, is I plan to spend more time at home this winter. I'm not going to be gone for like four months this time. I'm going to just go uh, make little trips down to Columbia, shorter trips to Columbia to see the fiancé, and then be back. And then obviously... Um, I don't even, I'm just going to share a personal note with everybody before I start this Bible study. My fiance in, understands how serious I am about my faith with God, but I don't know that she knows on what level yet. 
<clears throat> it's something that she'll be learning with time because uh, at this point in my life, there's no way I can turn it off, okay? And it's just something that if you have a hobby and you get married or, you know, you're in a relationship and your your soulmate's hobby annoys you or <laughs> or something that they do, you just got to kind of blend in with it. And I'm glad, to, I'm glad to tell everybody that she's a Christian, just maybe not at the same level that I'm at. And I'm not making myself out to be any better. It's just that I have more experience, more time in it, in the scriptures. And down in Columbia, they're a little bit on the Catholic side, you know. Um, thank you, Annie. And uh, she's as beautiful in person as she is uh, in the photos. And um, I want to keep her that way. I want her to uh, live a healthy life and do the right things and, you know, take care of our bodies. That's what God wants us to do, right? We're supposed to be a temple of the Lord. All right. So now, now, uh, now that I got the audio singing stuff out of the way, let me reread this title one more time. And I posed a question a few minutes ago and I said, is God aware of what's happening? And obviously people may say, oh, of course he is. And then, but others still, you get lulled into a sense of, well, God doesn't really know. He's not paying attention. Things are not going to happen for, for a long time down the road. And this is just another hitch, hitch in the road, right, in life. You know, Israel's been dealing with these um, militants in Gaza for a long time. I mean, decades. They've, they've infiltrated Gaza several times in my life that I remember back in, like, the 90s, um, and in the early 2000s, especially when those suicide bombers were coming into Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and just blowing themselves up. I remember that quite well, quite well. It was back in the 90s. And Israel went in there and they eradicated the threat and then they pulled out. They said, we don't have any desire to occupy Gaza at all. They went in, they did their business, they took care of it and they left. So they call... They call um, they call this their 9-11 the other day, okay? Now, I want everybody to understand something, that back in the 90s, those suicide bombers that were coming into Israel and blowing themselves up in nightclubs and restaurants and stuff, that was every bit as bad as what, what we saw the other day. But what makes this a little bit unique is the sneak attack. The second here. All right, guys, sorry. Um, sometimes the enemy is trying to stop my video. <laughs> Say a prayer that this does not get interrupted by Facebook, okay? Because a lot of sensitive topics we're talking about tonight. Uh, what's the goal of this, of this video tonight in this Bible study? Is to cue you in that the Word of God is powerful. It's alive. God knows what's going on. Nothing takes Him by surprise. And there's a lot of references in the book of Joel and Zechariah, and I'm going to read a few of them this evening just to kind of perk your um, senses a little bit and appetite for how powerful God's word really is. Very, very important to understand that um, he's not asleep. He's not, it, it's not that he's not paying attention. He's very paying attention. And I'm get this passage that I have in the title here. Is it talking about the ambush the other day? Well, maybe so, maybe not. But like I say, again, as a disclaimer to everybody out there, is that the Bible is not a book. It's a literal communication between God and man. Um, God will use the Bible to communicate with you if you take your time to open it up and start reading, and which I did, and it did not take me very long once I started reviewing uh, Joel and Zechariah, and I'm like, wow, okay. So Joel and Zechariah are talking about not only events that are going to happen during that seven-year tribulation that we all talk about, going in Revelation and all, but there's references made that are obviously leading up to that moment. So that's why I want to, I just kind of want to perk the audience a little bit tonight to that. And in the title I have here, this is Joel chapter 2, verse 9. Um, Joel has a lot to say, I believe personally, about our generation, our season that we're living in before the rapture of the church. Okay? They shall run to and fro in the city. Who is, who is they? Israel's enemies, 
okay, Israel's enemies. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. You know, they took bulldozers and bulldozed that uh, razor wire wall down when they infiltrated. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. So they went in, these Hamas militants, they went in and they abducted, we're talking Holocaust survivors, old people, senior citizens, uh, women and children. Listen, I want everybody to understand something. Mostly what terrorists like to do is they, they, they like to choose the weak to attack. They attack the weak because the weak is the less resistance. They don't fight back as much as like a, a, a soldier that knows how to fight, okay? Now, there were some videos that you all saw where they dragged somebody out of a tank, right? Some Israeli soldier dragged him out of a tank. Um, but that was the only one that I saw. And I don't know really any, any other instances where they like overcame the Israeli troops. They were caught by surprise. Like a thief, Joel chapter two, verse nine. Linda, you're absolutely right. They're, they're not only cowards, they're despicable, disgusting cowards that have the spirit of Antichrist living in them. And the spirit of Antichrist is literally Satan incarnate. Okay, Satan is a murderer. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He sows discord among the brethren. He's the father of lies. Jesus called him the father of lies. He tried to get Jesus to worship him in the desert. Yeah, have fun with that. The son of God. <laughs> All right. But that's how, that's how brazen this enemy that we have is. And when his minions possess people in false religions, um, this is the fruits thereof. Jesus said, ye shall know a tree by its fruit. Okay. Um, and I warned, I warned Israel about that. And I told, I told some of the Israeli friends that I know, I said, this is, this is not a good thing to enter into some kind of agreement with your enemies. They may not be the Hamas and Palestinians, but even the Saudi Arabia, you can't trust them. You can't trust any of those nations over there. You can't trust... Israel cannot even trust the United States, especially with Joe Biden. And, you know, I mean, let's say hypothetically that Trump gets reelected, hypothetically speaking. He wants to divide the land of Israel. That's a no-no. <laughs> um, the reason why he wants to do it is because he thinks it will bring in peace. Uh, the problem with that situation is that he doesn't have good spiritual advisors around him. He needs good spiritual advisors. If he had good spiritual advisors around him, he would be, <clears throat> I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. I'm not going to divide the land of Israel. You know why Joel, the book of Joel is so powerful? Let me read this one to you. Speaking of dividing the land of Israel, I've had people tell me that it's not going to get divided. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> In the book of Joel, chapter 3, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I read this the other day, I will also gather all the nations. That's the battle of Armageddon. Okay, I will gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's Megiddo. I was standing on Megiddo in July of 2023. And I will plead with them there for my people, and for my heritage Israel, in whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. This is really, really incredible. And in verse 4, what I mentioned the other day, I told you that the Palestinians are uh, directly mentioned in verse 4. And what makes the word of God so incredible, there was no Palestine during the time of Joel, thousands of years. There was no Palestine, there was no Palestinians. There was the Philistines, but there was no phrase called Palestine during Joel's time. God was speaking thousands of years into the future through Joel. So do you all understand why I'm in Joel? Because Joel talks a lot about what we're in right now. I can't do an exhaustive study of Joel and Zechariah tonight, but we're going to read a few scriptures just to perk your interest in it so that maybe you'll do some of your own independent study in there and God will start speaking to you. Because I guarantee you this, ladies and gentlemen, when I used to do family Bible studies, when I was growing up, 
with my sisters and my parents and stuff, God would show one of us something and then he would show another family member something else, a little new angle to it that I didn't see or that my sisters didn't see or my dad didn't see, but my dad saw something that I didn't see. And so when we all get together and we look at what these statements are in, like Joel, for example, that God will show me something, but it's not all about me at all. It's only what God shows me I can share with you, but then he'll show you something else. And this is how the church gets edified in Bible studies. That's why I do these. So the Bible says in Joel that his, his land is going to clearly get divided. He's going to get angry about it. And then he's going to take them all to the Battle of Armageddon and settle this once and for all. And the good news is, church, we're raptured first before that happens. Let me go back again to Joel chapter 2. Does this sound familiar about the ambush the other day? Um, was God warning his people? In verse 1 of Joel chapter 2, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Where is Zion? That's Jerusalem. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now wait a minute, Lord. Uh, you, you, wrote, you had Joel write that down, Lord, but that was... Thousands of years ago, what? this is for a future reference, right? And the Lord is confirming in my spirit that this is for now. So I want everybody to under, understand, I'm going back to that again, that when you read these verses of scripture, that God is speaking to the now, not to the then, not to then. Sometimes things that happened in the past were fulfilled, but there can be double prophetic references, okay? We don't need modern day prophets. If you get on a YouTube channel and they call themselves Christian and oh, I have a prophet on my show today and he has a word from the Lord. Don't believe it, all right? God does not operate under that administration today, under that dispensation. He's, he did away with that. He operates through the Holy Spirit and his son guiding us in our hearts by reading the scriptures, all right? We do not need uh, Old Testament prophets today. They're, they do not exist. So it doesn't matter what Mormons tell you, Roman Catholics tell you, Jehovah Witnesses tell you, Muslims tell you, or somebody claiming to be a Christian telling you, there's prophets. There's no prophets today. Our prophecy is in scripture. And believe me, there's more that scripture has to say here because it's alive and powerful in the moment than you could ever, ever um, pretend to be a prophet and say that God told me, thus saith the Lord. There's more in here than we'll, than we'll ever have in our lifetime because it's alive and powerful. And uh, let me back up what I'm saying. I feel like it's very important to mention it because, you know, obviously we have a lot of people that are going to be in intellectual idolatry with their opinions. And this is not my opinion. This is not my opinion. This is the word of God. So if there's people out there that want to argue this point, then go to the scriptures and argue with God. All right. Hebrews chapter one says this. King James, God who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the father's by the prophets, hath in these last days, what are we in today, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the last days, spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by him also he made, made the worlds. He spoke to us through his son. And did you want to know what Joel's name, and we're in Joel in the moment here, Old Testament Joel. Do you know what Joel's name actually means in Hebrew? Yahweh is God. Woo! Yahweh is God. Oh, it does. Look it up if you don't believe me. You got to Google. Go check it out. Put in Joel's Hebrew, Hebrew name, the meaning of Joel's Hebrew name. Yahweh is God. Okay? And what did Hebrews tell us? That God uses his son now to speak to us. Okay, and he's living in our hearts 
and we read the scriptures and guess where he's waiting for us? He's waiting for us in the scriptures. So why do you think I spend the time when I see something significant like that happening in Israel? I'm like, ooh, okay. Well, Lord, I thought Saudi Arabia was getting ready to sign a deal with Israel um, to resume normalization and build little freeways and trains going back and forth and airlines and um, they're going to resume everything. But you know what? Uh, you know what that was on the table for that that um, normalization, giving the Palestinians half of Jerusalem. Okay, it's a very tangled web that we weave in Scripture because I feel like something happened <laughs> the other day and it just put all of that on hold. God does not want His land divided, guys and gals. I just want that to be very clear. Yes, it says it's going to happen in Joel chapter three. But that's not what he wants. And he keeps warning people to stay off my land. Stop it. Knock it off. Okay, don't, don't mess with my land. That's God's land. And these people are going to finally push the Lord to the point where he's going to allow it to happen because he's going to lay the smack down on the ones who are responsible for doing it. And our current administration would love to divide that land so that they can claim credit for some kind of peace deal Okay, it's a false peace. We know the Antichrist comes under false pretenses, false peace. He shall enter in peaceably. Let's look at some other scriptures here. Um, let's look at, uh, let's do this. Let's go over to Zechariah. Let's look at what Zechariah has to say. Okay. Um... I had a couple of scriptures here in mind for Zechariah, and I'm just kind of looking through it. Zechariah is a little bit of a bigger book than Joel. Joel is only um, three chapters, and Zechariah is about 12. But Zechariah has some really, really incredible things to say about um, what we're the season that we're living in right now. Um, okay, give me one second. Okay, this is quite interesting and very mysterious. I'm going to read out of Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. This is really interesting. Okay. It says here, Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity have shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall comfort Zion, yet comfort Zion, that's Jerusalem, and he shall yet choose Jerusalem, then lifted up I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Horns represent kingdoms, okay, of authority. This is Zechariah seeing this in a vision. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Quite interesting. Uh, so... It sounds to me like four, four authorities or four nations are going to be responsible for dividing the land in verse 19. And the Lord shewed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Very mysterious. You know, you would think, oh, well, I don't really know what's going on here, so I'm just going to kind of keep reading on and forget about it. This is where meditation comes in and a little bit of further research. Uh, but it sounds to me like God is referring to different authorities that are going to have a hand in scattering the Jews. In other words, like parting the land, giving some of it to the Palestinians. We absolutely know that's going to happen in Joel chapter 3. Um, okay, here we go. This is Joel, this is Zechariah chapter 2. I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, whither thou hast go? And he said to me to measure Jerusalem 
to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. <clears throat> and behold, the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him. These are angels measuring Jerusalem. And he said unto him, run, speak to this young man saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, come forth and flee the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest in the daughter of, with the daughter of Babylon. So the daughter of Babylon is a Babylon in the future. It's not the Old Testament Babylon. So it's like there's this alliance with Jerusalem and the daughter of Babylon. And some of you that have been following my Bible studies long enough to know, know what I think who the daughter of Babylon is. Our nation. Let me uh, give you one more scripture to share with you why this is so serious about dividing the land of Israel. And I'm going to give you some final thoughts about what I think is happening right now over there based on scripture. And then we're done, okay? Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Listen to this passage of scripture in Je Zechariah chapter 8, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. What makes, what is going to make God, what is, makes God jealous about Jerusalem? What makes him, what's going to make him jealous about Jerusalem is when somebody or a bunch of somebodies or maybe four leaders come along and divide Jerusalem and give some to the Palestinians. That's going to make him jealous. And you see, this is, not an ordinary jealousy. This is a supernatural jealousy that we're looking at here. So I'm going to dig more into Zechariah and Joel. I'm going to kind of conclude here tonight because I could be on here for a long time reading scriptures for you, but I'm going to highlight a few more in the next Bible study. And I want to monitor what's happening, obviously, in the next several days to week uh, weeks or see how long this war is going to last. But here's what I think is going to happen. I don't have all the details figured out, but what I'm looking at, what I'm seeing right now, this particular war, which Israel has not claimed uh, war on anybody. They've had special operations for a long time, but they've not declared war in like 50 years. Okay, the Yom Kippur War was the last one that they they were in official war with. This is, a, this is the declaration of war what happened. So this is not anything that happened in the 90s or the 2000s, although those were very atrocious. Um, they've literally declared war. So what I see happening possibly is that when the dust is settled from this war that Netanyahu has declared, it could go in multiple directions in scripture. I'm not claiming to know exactly, but what I feel is going to happen is when this little war is over with, whatever that looks like, I believe that's going to set the groundwork for dividing the land of Israel and giving the Palestinians a state. Because if the threat is eliminated, for example, if Hamas is eradicated, if the threat is eliminated, that causes Israel to drop its guard. Okay, we have everything secure now. Now we can go back to the negotiating table. Um, and there were threats today by Israel. Netanyahu told um, Hezbollah, who operates out of Syria, they warn them to stay out of this conflict. If they get involved, they will flatten Damascus. And there was a lot of prophetic bells going off with other Christians on social media saying, oh, well, Isaiah chapter 17, God says that Damascus is a burden and he's going, it'll, it will be uninhabitable when God gets done with it. And a lot of people have this in their mind that it's going to be Israel that flattens Damascus, Okay. So it looks like it, but I want, I, I want to caution some Bible students and just, just remind them of one thing. God doesn't need a nation to judge an, another nation. He can do it himself if, if he desires to do it that way. And Jesus told us that earthquakes in diverse places would be prevalent between now ramping up 
as labor pains through the seven year tribulation to the very end. So Damascus could absolutely get wiped out by an earthquake. Look, we saw some massive earthquakes over in Syria and um, uh, Iran um, earlier this year. They're big ones, all right? So Jesus said earthquakes, watch out for them. So I'm not, I'm not gonna just be this guy that says, oh, it's gonna be Israel that wipes out Damascus. It could be, it could be an earthquake that does it. An earthquake, I mean, will level a city. It can do it. Like, I mean, it's, we just had one, where was it? It was in Afghanistan uh, just the other day when this stuff was going on in, in Israel. There was a massive earthquake that killed a whole bunch of people in Afghanistan. It doesn't get talked about very much. But the earthquakes are ramping up. So you see, um, Damascus could be uninhabitable from an earthquake or it could be a military incursion. But that's, look, that's how close we are to everything happening. And um, it's going to keep ramping up, ladies and gentlemen. That's, there's nowhere to go but forward, okay? Nowhere to go but forward. We're not going to go back in time. We're not going, things are not going to slow down. They're going to keep speeding up because that's what the Bible promises is going to happen, you know? So Afghanistan, yeah, there you go, Lydia. Yeah, and I, I didn't have the article ready for that, but it was pretty big. Let me see if I can pull, pull it up real fast. How big? Okay, how big was the earthquake in Afghanistan? It was in Herat, H-E-R-A-T, Herat. Earthquake, um, and it was 6.3 in magnitude, uh, Western Afghanistan, just uh, days after two quakes of the same magnitude left more than 2,000 dead. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's 6.2, but you have to understand um, 6.2 is still pretty darn serious. It's, you know, um, those are probably aftershocks, Lydia. I would think those are, you know, a 4.5. Could be an earthquake. I mean, there's earthquakes like, magnitude twos and ones and stuff but you know like when you have these ones that are in sixes and sevens and stuff like that thousands of aftershocks like they can be smaller and they just keep kind of ramping down but the problem with these massive earthquakes like this and these nations over there like in afghanistan their structures aren't built to withstand earthquakes like some other cities could be you know like especially like a 6.2 um, they just, they crumble. They crumble and people get buried underneath it, you know, and sometimes big crevices open up in the ground and just swallow. They, sometimes they can swallow whole cities. This is ABC News here. This one was uh, 41 minutes ago uh, as of the writing of this article. 6.3 magnitude earthquake hits Afghanistan days after devastating weekend quakes. Oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, guess what? <laughs> All right, I'm not laughing that this happened, but I'm just saying like it blows me away. All right, I'm talking about an earthquake that happened in Afghanistan over the, when Israel was being attacked. Well, this just happened. A 6.3 just happened. Wow, man, wow, okay? It was just two days after um, a magnitude, uh, sorry, that left more than 1,200 dead. This quake was northwest of Herat, Afghanistan. Okay. No details were immediately available. So, you know, and then there was another one followed up by a 5.0 magnitude quake a few minutes later. Those are aftershocks, guys. I mean, aftershocks can, there can be literally thousands of aftershocks. So my point, and this, this is so cool because this really solidifies what I'm trying to say is that Damascus could be wiped out by an earthquake. And look, I'm trying to find an earthquake that happened two days ago in Afghanistan. ABC News, and I'm looking for it, and I'm like, oh, here it is. Oh no, wait a minute, this just happened. Wow, guys, wow, crazy, 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 crazy. So, you know, some people are like, oh, we've always had earthquakes. Yeah, I know we have, but birth pangs, remember, if you're a Christian, what did Jesus say? It would be as a woman, as a woman in labor. So. It's going to increase more earthquakes, more intensity, famines, pestilence, war, rumors of wars, etc. I'm going to come back on, Lord willing, tomorrow, and I'm going to have some really, really 
zeroed in scriptures in Joel and Zechariah for you for you all, okay? And uh, maybe I'll do it without singing next time. I'm trying not to make these too long. I want to try to keep it at 30 minutes. I know this went over. But if I can keep it around 30 minutes, and then I'm going to be sharing little little Bible messages as well. Um, I just call them AM 316, like John 316. AM 316, they're just little Bible verses and a prayer. So they'll give you about five to six, seven minutes, something like that, and then I'm done. And I want to send that out. And the whole purpose of this, ladies and gentlemen, is to get perk people's awareness of the times and the seasons that we're living in, praying for people who need it, praying for people to get saved and to wake up. Okay, It's all going to matter someday. It will all matter. This is not a waste of time to pay attention. It's not a waste of time to be in your Bible. Um, when I prayed for the hostages over in, uh, in Gaza, Yes, a lot of them got killed, but you know, uh, when I prayed that prayer, uh, yesterday, it was yesterday night, I read this morning that the Israeli Defense Forces were able to rescue scores of hostages. They've got a lot of them back. So prayer works, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we do as Christians. We pray and intercede, okay? Because the battle is in the spirit. We pray for those Israeli troops to get the food they need, the ammo they need, um, the wisdom that they need and to do it with minimal casualties for them because they're in a danger. Gaza is dangerous. It's da more dangerous than it was 15, 20 years ago. They have American weapons over in Gaza now. And look, I, I know that it's a, it's a, it's, oh, it's a catch 22 because, you know, when you warn the Gazan citizens that you're getting ready to strike, well, the terrorists are going to leave also. They're not going to be there just going to hit a building and it's going to fall down, you know? So it's, it's a catch 22. Good to see you, brother Scott. You made it, but I'm, you're a little late. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost finished with this one, but that's okay. That's why instant replay is going to be available. I'm going to put this on YouTube and uh, probably Twitter. And it's obviously going out into the group, but um, you want to, you want to know what's, what's interesting as a closing thought is that, you know what God's policy was like for Joshua back in the Old Testament when they were going to perform an incursion into the enemy's cities? This is God speaking. I, it's in scripture. I've got it for y'all. Anybody wants to verify it. He said, leave no one alive. He said, you kill them all. Kill them all. God said that. I didn't say that. He said it. You kill them all. You eradicate everything. And it, you know, and it sounds brutal and harsh, right? You don't want to kill civilians, innocent civilians. But whose fault is it really at the end of the day when you think about it? Um, in this situation that we're looking at right now, civilian casualties are going to end up dying because it's Hamas's fault. Because they ran across the border funded by Iran, which Iran was funded by Joe Biden. Six billion dollars worth of funding American weapons are found in Gaza, okay? Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman, told us that yesterday, that the IDF troops found American military equipment in Gaza. Isn't that just wonderful to kill is Israelis? Don't think the Lord's not paying attention. He is. And we're going to read more about that in Joel and Zechariah and probably Isaiah as well. So, all right, guys, that's it for tonight. I'm done. The Lord's got me on on done okay so thank you all for joining me i really appreciate it uh i'm gonna download this a little later this evening put it on youtube and then um we want to help people get saved we want people to learn what it means to know jesus knowing jesus means that it's the jesus that died on the cross for their sins and for mine and the reason why I'm saved and going heaven to heaven, the only reason why I'm saved and going to heaven is because of what he did for me on the cross. It's not just believing in a Jesus that gets me saved. Or, oh, you just have to believe, that's all. There's a bunch of Jesuses out there that people believe, but it's not the one that I read about in John 3.16. What, why did he go on the cross and die? Was, it be, was he performing a ritual of some kind? Did he do it because, I don't know, it was just cool to do it? 
I'm talking to somebody out there that has this warped version of Jesus. Why do you think he died on the cross? Why do you think he shed his blood and, and spilled his blood and was humiliated? The king of kings, the creator of this universe, why do you think he hung on a cross and died? He did it because I have a sin problem and you have a sin problem. And it needs to be, um, there needs to be a vaccination for that sin problem and he's our vaccination for it. That's the Jesus that I know. That's the Jesus that I believe in. That's the Jesus that I have faith in. So if I understand that I'm a sinner, that means I must have offended God in some way. That must mean if I was to die um, and I don't have Jesus, that means I'm in big trouble. So do you think I would not be remorseful about learning that, yes, I've fallen short? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would be sorrowful, I would be repenting. Yes, repentance is part of the born again experience. And I'm gonna get deeper into that as we go along. We get back to the Jesus Bible studies. We're gonna be digging in there, okay? Thank you very much, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Lydia, Scott, um, and everybody else, Linda, thank you all for joining me and some others that were just watching tonight, thank you as well. Um, I'll see you again very soon tomorrow night. We're gonna keep plowing. Okay, God bless you. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful evening.